Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week by CAD Tech Seminars, thebimguys.com. You can find us on the web at thebimguys.com or also therevitguys.com. We're going to show you today is how to edit the graphics in an electrical receptacle. Electrical receptacles consist of two families, an annotative family and a physical family. When we go into it, we have the ability to edit either the physical or and or the annotative. So let's go and take a look at a family, how it works, and then from this point you can kind of run with the ideas or concepts to build your own families. Now, what I'm going to do is go up top to the Systems tab, and we're going to talk about an electrical receptacle. The thing that makes electrical receptacles complex is because they have multiple families involved. For instance, one is the annotative, and that's what you're seeing right here. This little graphic comes in, and you can see it's a representation of where the receptacle is going to go. Now, I'm also going to put some text in here. Just go up top to annotate, and I'll say, let's put in some, some text. Now, if you notice my screen, it has a gray background, and you're wondering what's going on with this. This is Revit 2024 out of the box. When it comes out of the box, it runs a AutoCAD-esque kind of charcoal background. So that's what I'm running right now. I'm leaving it just as is, out of the box, no, um, no overrides or adjustments. If you do want to set it back to its original setup, you can go to File, Options, and then in here when you go to Graphics, you have the ability to adjust the different colors colors of how you want this thing to work. So you can see here, Revit has adjusted the color interface. Also, it's not even on the graphics anymore. They moved it on its own tab, Colors. So you can change the interface as you like. Okay, so back here, I want you to notice the word Test, the receptacle, and the actual walls that are around the outside. If I come down here and I change my annotative scale, or right here, change it to, let's say, um, let's go up to quarter inch. What you're gonna notice is that the text seemed to get smaller. Well, what has happened is the actual item on the sheet has gotten larger. The text has stayed the same size. But notice how the receptacle is working in an annotative mode. So what it's doing is it is actually looking at this scale multiplier, 24, and you see how it's adjusting as needed. So I'm going to go put it back to 8th inch. That's where we began, and just for, for our testing purposes now. Uh, this element, when we pick it, you can see it says it's a family. Now, one of the things we can do with this um, family is we can show it different ways. If I come down below here and I change this from coarse, medium to fine, what you're going to notice is it's now replacing it with the actual physical recept receptacle. So you can see the box in the faceplate. So what we have is um, a somewhat of a complex family here. And now let's go ahead and play with it a bit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit edit up top, edit family, and here's, here it is. Now, I'm going to come down here and change some of the settings. I'm going to set this to wireframe. What that's going to do is let us see all the, the pieces and how they, they fly around. Now, I'm going to fly around this thing, and you can see, Will, you're probably wondering, where is the annotative element? The annotative element only shows up in certain views. So if I go over here, and I'm in my family now, you can tell by the changing of the, the ribbon, and also... Uh, the browser. So I'm going to roll out the views here. I'm going to say go to my floor plan view. And what you're going to see is when I zoom in really close, you're going to notice that we have the physical box, which is right here. And that physical box does not change. Okay. If we go back to the lighting plan or power plan again, where I started, if I change the scale here, I'll change it to, let's say, quarter inch again or 16th. Notice how the text got bigger, but the physical box didn't because it's a physical box. If I was to change this back to annotative, like medium, you see that the, annot the annotative symbol got larger. So we're working with two families inside of here. Uh, family number one, it's a physical box. And when I go to reference level, you can see these are the reference planes that drive that particular size of that box. Uh, one thing we can also do is turn on layers if you're an AutoCAD user uh, in Revit, they're called categories. So if I type in VV right now, you'll see we have, this is the physical um, elements of the family, and then we go to annotative, you can see here's the annotative aspect. I'm going to turn on the dimensions, I'm going to hit OK on that. So now you can actually see what's driving all these pieces. You can see all the, the information here. So if you wanted to add some variables and get kind of crazy with all this, you could go ahead. It's all there, ready to roll. Now as I zoom in, you'll notice there's a, the, the annotative symbol. Now when I select the annotative symbol, I want you to notice that it is its own family. It's called duplex annotation. Now this family, again, is its own family, and it is linked or nested inside of this one, and it is locked in place. 
So you can actually edit this element. I'm going to go to Edit Family. And the emphasis on this is editing this graphic here. Now, the graphic as it comes up, you'll notice it does not contain uh, any reference planes. So we really don't know where zero is. So we'll quickly go ahead. I'm going to type in VV again for Victor Victor or Visibility Graphics. Don't panic when you don't see anything. Go directly to Annotation because remember, this is an annotative object that does not contain any physical geometry. So I'm going to say Turn on Dimensions, Turn on Reference Planes and Reference Lines. I hit OK. Now you can actually see where zero is. And this is how it will expand and contract based off of that point. Now inside of here, you have two pieces. You have this label, which is built in. That's going to let you type in GFI, uh, different things like that. The downside of this embedded symbology is, or this embedded tag, is that it will not, um, it's going to rotate with the symbol. So if the symbol is placed, let's say, 180 degrees, the text is actually going to rotate 180 degrees. So you're going to see some weird results when you actually roll this symbol up put it in lo different locations. Some people will take this out and just use tags. Um, again, that's beyond the scope of this video. I just want to show you how to change the graphics. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab that circle. Now you notice I'm in the family and it's called duplex annotation, as you can see up top. I'm just going to go ahead and use the offset command. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to offset this thing maybe an eighth of an inch. I'll just type that in and I'm going to touch right here. And you see, first of all, it's extremely large. But you see, it puts the circle around it. If you wanted to make it smaller, again, you can just play with some of the different aspects here and just drag it, etc. So I'll drag that in. Okay, so now I got a double loop. And now, would you want this? I have no idea. I'm just doing it again for uh, representation. Uh, or you want to make this a single. You can move the lines in as needed. So now we've edited this duplex annotation. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to screw up the duplex annotation family in the future. So I'm going to do a file save as. So I'm going to go file, save as, save as a family. And I'm going to call it duplex annotation. I'm going to put something behind it, maybe a double circle. Now I've delineated between the other one. I'm going to load it into the project. Now I'm not going to load it into the physical project. I'm actually going to load it into the duplex receptacle. I hit OK on that. What's going to happen is you'll see the new symbols coming in. I'm going to escape. Now, just like any family in Revit, I could grab this family and say swap it out. So I'm going to say use the double circle. Now, you'll notice that this receptacle is using the double circle. Now, what we're going to do now is go again and save again. So we save the, the nested family as a, as a double circle. We're now going to save the family. Come over here again. File. Save as. Save a family. I'm going to save this one as again. Duplex receptacle double circle. Okay. Now when I hit save on this, what we've done is we have the proper box, which is nice. Uh, those are used for a lot of things, so you can use this box over and over again, just change that symbology. Now what we're going to do is load into the project. Now this will go into the official project and we hit OK. So now what we have is we have two symbols. We have the new symbol. See this is our double receptacle double circle. So I come in here and I choose it. Now, when I brought it in, you'll notice that it's looking a little different from the others because there's some, uh, some things we want to maybe adjust. At this point, I'm going to come down here and change the scaling. I go to Fine. Notice they both go to Fine. When I go to Medium, they both go to Medium. And then we can go to Coarse, and you'll see how that's working. If I change the scale, come down here, whoop, wrong button. Drop down the scale. We change the scale, and you'll see how the scale changes. Now, within these families, there are certain things we can do. we can have that GFI thing being turned on and off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Escape a couple times. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to drop it down and say, I want the standard. Now, you'll notice that we're showing the different ones. So what we did was we took a family that was in a, in pretty much built perfect, and we went in there and we finessed or adjusted a few things. So now what we have is we have our standard receptacle, as you can see there, and then we have our double circle. Okay. Just like anything in Revit, I can grab this one. I can go up top, create similar, and notice I'm placing those in. So that's my double circle. I can now grab this one. I'll create similar, and I can go ahead and put the single in. So what it's going to come down to is now, if the box remains the same, the actual box that's in the wall, you just need to create symbology to match what you want to show. Now, it does get deeper when we start talking about voltage and all that. 
But again, this is showing you how to change out the graphics for the particular elements. You can come in here and adjust different things depending on what you're working on. But in this instance, if you're doing some, some simple symbology, that will take care of what you need. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you need have questions, have questions of technical support, you can reach us at, again, thebimguys.com. Thank you.